you know it's Wednesday Wisdom Wednesday with them Greetings and welcome to Season 2, Episode 17 of Wisdom Wednesday with MPK. I'm Dawn, DonnyRobinBobbin.com if you want to find me on the internet. And today we're going to keep talking about my favorite topic in the world, and that is Scripture memory, the memorization of the Word of God, the act of hiding God's Word in your heart. It is so important. I have found it to be just absolutely life-giving over my walk with the Lord Jesus. And uh, last week we talked about some sections in James. And as I thought about this week and some of the ugly news items and the thousand reasons that each one of us have to fear. Uh, anxiety is huge. Everybody is inundated with reasons to be afraid and to never leave their house ever again. But that isn't practical. That is not what we were created for. We were created for his purposes, to do his will. And part of that is just going and being a human and being social and having a life. And it means going to work every day. And it means dealing with those fears. And so what do you do when fear grips you and all of a sudden and it starts affecting your ability to be able to do what God has called you to do? Well, that's when you have to start doing the warfare that the scripture calls us to do. The warfare of renewing your mind, taking your thoughts captive. And so just turn quick to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. It's the spiritual war. We're in a spiritual war. The reason that fear is going through the roof is because we live in the end times and you're in the battle, the end battle. The enemy knows his time is short. Jesus said that he was going to return. And we're all left with the when are you going to return. We don't know, but he is going to return. And he promised us some really ugly statistics about what it's going to look like the closer we get to his return. And it kind of looks like it's playing out like that if you read the news headlines. So what we need to do is understand the devil's time is short. He has come to do his job, steal, kill, destroy, and we need to stand against him and resist him. And one of his tools is fear. And so he'll come at you with fear. And look at uh, 2 Corinthians 10. It says this in verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Verse 6. So this is it. We're in a spiritual war. Most of the war happens right here. Our thoughts, the enemy infecting our thoughts, our own flesh infecting our thoughts. And what is our weapons of warfare? It's prayer and the Word of God. The Word of God combats our toxic, stinking, wretched thoughts and is the detonator to our wicked, selfish flesh. Okay, so we need to resist Him. And that's why I memorize the scripture because it is what I've found is when my flesh is having its stuff. You know, those fleshy lists that you can read all throughout the scripture. Know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud blasphemers. And you see that list in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. It's horrific. And it can be us. And those flesh lists, when they come after us, the job that we need to continue to do until Jesus returns is combat our stinking thinking with the word of God until we punish all our own disobedience when our obedience is filled. So you're going to recognize the fingerprints of the devil quicker. You're not going to fall into those potholes like you used to. Self-pity is a really ugly, murky one that can come along. Fear is a murky one. Is it really wrong? I'm afraid because I read the news. Oh no, no, Fred. And we give in to anxiety. Did you know that you can give in to anxiety? 
you don't necessarily have to. And the Bible calls us not to. And that's where we're going to land today. So I have been memorizing Psalm 37 lately. That's one of my musicals. I've got, I think, 14 songs that encompass the entirety of Psalm 37. Now, Psalm 37 is very rich. It's a psalm of King David, and it's an alphabet psalm. This is one of his amazing creations. It's 40 verses. The theme of it is the heritage of the righteous and the calamity of the wicked. So in this psalm, you're going to see a lot of black and white. You're going to see this is what the wicked look like. This is what the righteous look like. This is the future of the wicked. This is the future of the righteous. But one of the neat themes in the first uh, nine verses, is that's all we're going to get today through, is the first nine verses. And I'm going to sing them to you. But it's do not fret. Over and over. Do not fret. And see, our nature, when we see the headlines of another school shooting, our nature, as we see these horrific headlines of war and rumors of war, is fear. Fear. And God is calling us not to fret. See, fear is presented, but what do you do with fear? And the, if you start chewing on the fear, oh no, oh no, what are we going to do? And, and oh no, and your blood pressure starts rising and all of a sudden you're given over to it. That's when you're in trouble. And that's why God gives us his word. So what we need to do instead of giving in to those anxieties and letting them wreak havoc on our health, we need to cast our burdens on the Lord and he shall sustain you. Cast your burdens on the Lord and he shall sustain you. Cast your burdens on the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. But we're going to do Psalm 37, 1 through 2. See, this is what we do with our fear. We cast it on God. We don't fret. Fretting isn't going to help when it comes to fear and anxiety and worry. All that is is chewing on the problem, chewing on the problem. You're not solving anything. You're just causing harm. And that's what this scripture, Psalm 37, tells us. It warns us. And so when the fear comes and you have a set of scriptures that you can go to instantly, you can combat that fear response. Your flesh normally took you on a trip down fear highway, anxiety road, and your blood pressure and you just go right back to bed because that's the only antidote. Wrong. Now we, we respond in Christ with the offensive weapon, the word. That's what scripture memory can do for you. When you get hit with and assaulted with these thoughts and these, these difficult situations, instead of running to fret and worry and anxiety, now we can run to trust that leads to faith that leads to obedience. Because fretting is never going to help. Who can... can Increase the stature by worry. That's nobody. So here's Psalm 37, 1 and 2. Do not fret because of evil doers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Psalm 37, 1 and 2 subjective. It's not done yet. Someday I might even have Noah take this in the studio, but it's way down the road. In fact, it might not ever happen. So that's what I'm going to give them to you now while they're hot and while we need them. We need this. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as a green herb. This is hope. When you're faced with evildoers and fretting because of the work of evildoers. And there are plenty of them out there. Not going away because the devil's got his people everywhere. We're in this war. And so this is a scripture that can really help us. Do not fret because of evildoers. See, our natural response is to fret. So God is telling us, don't do that. Now he gives us something different to do. Okay? He gives us hope because there is an end to the story. They're going to be done. Okay, they're going to be cut down like the grass, just like the grass is here today and mowed tomorrow. That's what's going to happen at, at Christ's return. He promises there's going to be a sword that goes out of his mouth and it's just going to poof. Goodbye, evildoers. 
it'll be over. Let's go to the next do not fret scripture, and it's seven through nine. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. Do not fret. It only causes harm. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Psalm 37, 7 through 9. Two songs. And in those two songs, we have do not fret, do not fret, do not fret. Do this instead. Why do we not fret? It only causes harm. And most of the time, it's only harm for your own physical health. Worry and anxiety causes so many multiple health issues, high blood pressure and uh, stress levels and cortisol levels and all sorts of levels that shouldn't be where they are because we give in to fretting. What we need to do is work in Christ, hiding his word in our heart and get to trusting. Okay, we're on this narrow path that leads to life. Guess what? Fear and anxiety and worry, they're a ditch. You do not want to fall into it. Get out. How? Hide God's word in your heart that you might not sin against him. Be honest. This is what I say to my kids and to my Sunday schoolers. Pray your fret. Okay, fret comes, turn it into an instant prayer response. Like a knee-jerk reaction. Oh, no. There was a school shooting. Oh God, I cry out to you for the families who are dealing with this. You know, oh no, huge hurricane runs through Florida. God, I cry out to you. Take the fret, that the, the energy that you would spend pouring it into yourself with worry and, and nail biting and turn it into prayer because prayer will actually move the mountains. Prayer, God has so many promises of, of the good of prayer. So pray your fret. We're in war. That is what I've learned in my old age. And may we all learn to use this beautiful offensive weapon properly. One of those ways, scripture memory. So Psalm 37, 1 and 2, Psalm 37, 7 through 9. And I've actually got 14 songs. You can go on Spotify. You can go all over where music is found and you can hide Titus into your heart. God wants you to learn how to meditate on his word and to not fret. God bless you. I hope that you have a very fruitful week. And instead of fretting, hide God's word in your heart instead. Pray your fret. God bless you. Showing all good fidelity That they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior